Welcome to Street Smart Samurai. I'm Dana Abbott, and I will be your guide throughout this video series on Kenjutsu, how to wield a Japanese sword. Let's take a look at some of the focal points in your surroundings. If you're standing in the middle of the room or outside, there are a lot of objects you can see and use as focal points. For example, if you stand in the middle of your room, use the four corners as focal points. You lift up the sword and you cut straight down the corner. You come over here to this side and you also cut straight down. There are lots of angles as far as windowsills where you can come in here for horizontal cuts. I want you to remember that if you look at a door jam, Pick the cuts and follow down this way. If you're looking at a window, follow the window and start from the top right and work your way down to the bottom left and vice versa. The broad side of the barn works very, very well too. Anything that where you can see an angle or a point, use that as one of your focal points and you'll find out that you will become more proficient. If you're in a place where you can't really use the focal points, Bring your own. Take a post-it or a piece of tape and just put it up on the wall like this and bring them over this way. Therefore, you'll be able to start cutting down and working in patterns that way. But most of all, the reason why we want to have a focal point is not for the walls as much, is to keep your eyes focused. Because if you start looking down, and most people have a tendency to look down when they're practicing by themselves. And when you look down, over time, it creates a bad habit. And that is, looks like you're fighting little people all the time. And you always go down this way. But if you stand tall and make sure the focal point is at eye, your own eye level, you can easily focus this way more and keep your technique higher up. Another focal point is the key I shout or your verbal focal point. This also is a very important point because if you can breathe correctly and consistently your cuts will be too. Yeah! There are a lot of us who spar and fight, and we all have our own ways to breathe. <laughs> Through our nose, like this, we hit, we do this, that, and the other, and we have good, strong breathing technique. But when you go to weaponry, it takes it up a couple more levels. So, what ki or shout that you use before for your breathing usually came from your throat. And dealing with lots of open hand martial arts, it works really, really well. But when you start swinging a weapon, it brings the ante up about five-fold. Therefore, when you ki with like a, ya, to, there's straight ki's that don't come from your throat. It comes right from the bottom of your lungs and pushes out. So then the air naturally, the oxen naturally, comes back in and you won't fatigue. A lot of times, people hold their breath when they fight with weaponry. They last about 30 seconds before they're bending over, coughing out their lungs. Remember, if you don't breathe correctly, you won't get to the target. As a general rule, the ki, your vocal focal point, depending on its speed, the duration, the loudness, and how much pressure you're putting out for your ki, will denote a lot of time the technique you are executing. Therefore, if I had a technique and I was going slow, I'd use a long, slow ki, like that. If I was to use this a lot faster, a lot harder, where I'd hit my target a lot fuller, it'd sound more like this. So you can see the differences in the key eyes.
I am George, and this video is part of the Way Movement, a career path in video sponsored by TGN. To learn more, visit TGN.tv.